John began his record of his gospel, uh, introducing us to Jesus, the word of God, the word that became flesh, the word that was with God from the beginning, the word that is God, the word that created all things. Let there be light began the creative process that culminated uh, in the, uh, the formation of mankind, the jewel of God's creation. And then throughout the, uh, the Gospel of John, there's all of these themes that uh, begin to manifest themselves, revealed God to people. But this wasn't the only time and the only place and the only way that he did so. In fact, all of these themes about uh, God presenting himself, introducing himself, revealing himself to people began back in the beginning. He walked with people in the garden. He desires that kind of fellowship with us. And prayer is the nature of that kind of fellowship. The nature of God communing with people, walking and talking, just as he did with Adam and Eve before they sinned. Jesus came to remove the barrier of sin so that we could have conversation, have that true fellowship with God. So let's turn our attention to John chapter 17 in this prayer of Jesus for the disciples. There's so much teaching that is involved in this prayer, but it really encapsulates everything that we have discussed about the prayer life of Jesus and his teachings on prayer. They're all embodied in this. It would take us hours to exhaust this, this passage. So I want to uh, ask you to spend time in this passage and read it again as if it were the very first time and see the, the themes. And I just jotted these down in the margins of my Bible this time. Got out another Bible, started from scratch on this one uh, so that I could see it again. But I want you to notice these themes that we've been talking about in discussing prayer. And this is the order at which they appear in the uh, this particular prayer. Glory, authority, life, prayer unification of God and man, joy, sanctification, evangelism, and love. And Jesus uses terms like making known or knowing or authority or word or truth 17 times in uh, 20 verses here. He's making this point. I have become, the word of God has become one of you so that I might reveal the Father and that you might become one with him. He opens his prayer saying, uh, the, the Bible says that uh, when Jesus spoke these words, so his prayer is going to connect back to what he had just finished saying. What had he said? Back in chapter 16, verse 33, I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so now based upon that, he lifts up his eyes and says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to those whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you the only true God. And so Jesus's prayer then uh, speaks of this. I glorified you on earth and having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Things have come full circle, as we say, in John's gospel, because John began uh, his gospel teaching this, and now Jesus is, is praying this back to the Father, that he and the Father are one, and his prayer life is that ongoing conversation, that ongoing fellowship, just as ours should be. So as you read this and, and explore this beautiful prayer, understand that what he is trying to, to bring us into is the oneness that we have or can have with God when our sins are forgiven. 
that separation that occurred when Eve took the bite and handed it and Adam took his bite. That separation, we call it the fall of man. It, it was nothing more than a barrier that became uh, or came in between God and his creation. And Jesus Christ eliminated that barrier. And now in Christ, we can have that peace because he has overcome the world. If you look down in verse 13, I've, I've spoken this, that my joy may be fulfilled in them. Peace and joy. And then at the, the end of this prayer, the last words of it was, I will continue to make it known, the name of the Father, that the love with which you had loved me may be in them and I in them. God has reunified. That's a great concept. That is the glory of God in the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. And that oneness is what we all should desire and crave and pray for. That we might have his peace, that we might live our lives in the midst of tribulation with joy, and that knowing that our Father has washed away our sins and has set us apart from this world, has given us a task to share that beautiful love with the entire world, that they will know that Jesus is Messiah, that we can have the love that God manifested for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and this is eternal life jesus said that they know you the only true god why do we pray to god the father through jesus the son in his name by his authority it's because that is the will of God that we become one with him. Let us think about all of these things. Again, read this with a freshness, a sense of purpose, because these things should be embodied in our prayers when we say, not my will, but yours be done. Heavenly Father, I need so desperately to know you. It is impossible for me to begin to understand all on my own how a, a God that is powerful enough to create the universe and hold it in place by the power of his word, how he can consider me something so small, so seemingly insignificant, so flawed. How can he consider me and think, I want to be one with him? Father, thank you for Jesus. We know that he did come for that wonderful purpose, that we can begin to see you more clearly and come to know you by his authority. When we walk in his footsteps, and do the things that he has commanded. Why? Because this is your will. And we thank you for that guidance. I need it. I need the correction. I need the forgiveness. So that I can walk more closely with you. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your truth. That are all a part of the, the nature that you've revealed. That you are loved. And so because of this, Father, refresh me today. Change my mind, my thinking when I need it. Help me think more clearly and remove the clutter away from me. Help me to set aside the things that are distractions so that I may continually speak with you, walk with you, and talk with you so that I may more closely resemble you. Help me be like Jesus and because of who he is and what he did and what he has given me, 
I pray in his precious name. Amen.